Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumray here again with another video review, this time of Josh Trank's eagerly anticipated Capone starring none other than Tom Hardy as Al Capone, the infamous Prohibition-era gangster. Now, the movie depicts the last year of Capone's life as he suffered the effects of tertiary syphilis, the disease that killed him at only 48 years old. Now, Everyone listening to this is no doubt aware of Josh Trank's history, with Fantastic Four one of the biggest debacles of the last decade or so. The gist of it, of course, is that Trank was unable to deliver the film that he wanted to 20th Century Fox, which no doubt was expecting something a whole lot more commercial than what they got in their first cut. Now, watching Capone, which is undiluted Josh Trank working at his most extreme, it seems that making a film commercial or accessible is pretty low on his list of priorities. In fact, Capone, which really should be going by its original title, Fonzo, referring to the name that Capone's family called him, is as extreme a movie as I've seen. It's clearly Trank's attempt to do a David Cronenberg or David Lynch style movie, a move that's clearly a major reset for his career, although at the same time, the film, while stylish and well made, is a tough watch from start to finish, and it remains to be seen whether or not anyone's actually going to bother to watch it. One thing this is not, however, is a gangster film. In fact, one of my issues with Capone is that I feel like Trank, who also wrote the screenplay, doesn't actually know anything about Capone's history, or rather, really care. There's no real compelling reason that this even has to be a Capone biopic other than the name recognition, as Hardy could basically be playing any old gangster. The film is a tough slog. Imagine the last 10 minutes or so of The Irishman, but as a 100-minute film. Hardy goes all in, too much so perhaps, as the growling, snarling Capone. I mean... I mean, you've really never seen Tom Hardy like you have here, with him shitting the bed and walking around, wearing a diaper, having a carrot as a cigar, firing a gold-plated Tommy gun at the people that are working in his garden. I mean, this is Tom Hardy really chewing scenery. Now, the film depicts him succumbing to dementia, being in a constantly confused state, but being propped up by a Dr. Feelgood, played by Cull McLaughlin, who keeps him alive on the off chance that he may reveal where he's hidden 10 million bucks, something Capone says he knows he did, but can't remember. Hardy's never been a subtle actor, and if he's ever showboated or been accused of chewing scenery, Capone resets that bar, either high or low, depending on your opinion of him. Here's one of the film's big problems. Capone never, ever feels like a real person. The movie depicts him as a festering monster. There's no semblance at all to what the real Capone might have been like. There's no empathy whatsoever. Now, whether or not somebody like Capone actually deserves your empathy is up for debate. But I have to say, it makes him a very tough character to watch for 100 minutes. Trank also plays fast and loose with his own style, introducing characters in the quote-unquote real world, interacting with each other while Capone's off-screen, but then changing the rules so that they don't actually exist, that they're just figments of Capone's imagination. It's a messy cheat. Trank also gives in to his baser instincts as a filmmaker, shoehorning in grand guignol gore scenes that are more Caligula than reality-based, making them exist as fantasies in Capone's mind, as if he had to put in a certain amount of carnage just to make the film play to an extreme crowd. That said, Capone also isn't a movie that can be easily dismissed. You have to give Trank credit for making a wildly unconventional film, and even if it's not necessarily entertaining, you can't deny that it's well made. For one thing, it's very well paced. I was surprised at how quick the 100 minute running time went by, as I have to admit, it wasn't a movie I was really enjoying, but it still doesn't seem slow, which is kind of a skilled thing to pull off. I mean, a movie like this easily could have felt endless. The visual style, helped immensely by David Lynch's DP Peter Deming, is terrific, and the production design and casting, all above reproach. You really can't fault him here. Linda Cardellini is excellent as Capone's devoted wife, while Matt Dillon also has a solid role as one of Al's old cronies. And of course, McLaughlin is always fun to watch as well. I also really like the sparse score by ELP, a rapper slash record producer who gives the soundtrack a really avant-garde feel that matches the film. However, the fact remains that Capone is still an exercise in excess, both in terms of Trank challenging and repelling his audience, and Hardy perhaps going more over the top than he ever has before. If you thought he was tough to understand as Bane, well, let me tell you, you ain't seen nothing yet. As a result, you can't put this one squarely in as a love it or hate it kind of film. I can't say I loved it or even liked it, but then again, I also can't totally dismiss it as it's too well made. I mean, Trank clearly has some skill behind the camera. Ultimately, I respect it enough to give it a 6 on 10, but I have serious doubts as to whether or not a movie like this ever has a chance of finding an audience and... 
I'll be honest, it's probably a movie that I will never revisit. Even still, you gotta give it some props. For JoeBlow.com, I'm Chris Bumbray.